Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Beth Smith, and I am one of the partners with GWIZ Education. I will be leading your webinar tonight. Um, normally, we would have Sherry Mayberry on here with us, and um, she actually runs the webinar, um, but she's having an internet crash right now. <laughs> so I'm going to run the webinar and do the webinar, so bear with me. Um, hopefully, everything will go just fine. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to see if you have questions or if you're having issues right now because I have to shrink that part of my screen so that I can do the webinar. So hopefully everybody can hear me. And um, we are recording this. So if you have other providers that you think might want to attend at another time or if you want to go back and review, um, we will post this on our website. Because we are having technical difficulties, we will repeat this webinar um, in the next week or two. Um, that way you will have a chance to ask questions if you have questions, but we didn't want everybody who had signed up to miss out, so I'm going to do my best to walk you through this and uh, run the webinar as best I can. Again, GWIS Education, a lot of you are customers. We have quite a few of you who are not customers. We are a company dedicated to family child care providers. We do have others who use our curriculum, such as nannies, homeschoolers, um, and even some smaller centers, but our main focus is family child care. We started the company several years ago because we felt there was a need for a curriculum for family child care. Um, you all have a very unique and, and special group that you work with because you work with all ages from infants all the way through school age. And in looking at the marketplace at the time, we really felt there was just not a lot of options out there for um, providers who had that that mix of ages, and it's quite challenging to say the least. And so that's how GWIS was born. Um, we did a test market to try to figure out what the market wanted. We had a test website. We probably had about a thousand providers across the country who tried what we had, gave us feedback, and from there we have what we have now. That being said, we are constantly updating and improving the curriculum to try to make it better for um, providers. So if you are a customer or you're thinking about becoming a customer, if you ever have feedback, we do take it very seriously and we incorporate it into what we do. Um, the curriculum is aligned in, in a lot of states across the country um, and approved in some and we're in the process of approval for others. If you want to see where the alignment charts are, you go under YG Wiz, you go to state alignment, and then you would click there and then you can pull down your state and see. If you do that and you do not find alignment, that doesn't mean we don't align. It just means we haven't gotten around to doing it yet. Or it could mean that there are new standards coming out in your state and we're kind of waiting until that, that happens. Um, but that's where you would go to find that. Tonight what we're going to do is I'm going to take you through our user's guide, which for the, all of you who are customers is very, very important. It's your training manual. Um, for those of you who are not customers, maybe you are, we have some specialists, some QRIS specialists on the line, some CCRNR folks. Um, for those of you who are in those roles, our user's guide is the tool that providers can use to learn not only about how to use the curriculum, but also a lot about child development, anecdotal notes, individualization, and, and those types of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that document and walk through it spend some time in there. Um, we do, we have done webinars in more detail on some of the topics that are covered in there. But I want to just show you what is in there because it is very important. After that, I'm going to take you into the actual curriculum so we can look at the lesson plans and talk about how GWIZ addresses all ages and also all developmental areas and how we do that and why we do it the way we do it. So first, like I said, we're going to go into the user's guide. So the user's guide is found under our product, and you go down to the user's guide and click. Okay, computer. There we go. My computer's slow today, too. Must be something going on. Maybe it's the rain. Okay, now I flew out of there. Sorry. We're having um, storms in our area, so it could be that. All right, so if you go down here, you can click on this, which is what I'm going to do. This is a PDF file, so as long as you have Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat Reader on your computer, you should be able to open it. You can also go to specific areas by clicking here. So if there's just one area you want to go to, you can go there. What I'm going to do is click on here, 
And where did my user's guide go? Uh-oh. <laughs> um, we have a big problem because that has disappeared on me. Hold on. Let me try that again. I am so sorry about this. I don't know where it is. Um, I'm going to try going into the different sections. Let me try that. Ah, there we go. I'm going to go section by section. Really all we're missing there is the cover and the table of contents. Um, the first section is very important because it's about your role. Uh, your role as a provider is very, very important because you are the one who is helping children as they grow and develop from the time they're babies, some of them, until they go off to school. The section covers questioning, modeling language, teachable moments, and ongoing training and assessment. First, we're going to talk about effective teaching. And part of these things we will get into again when we go into the um, lesson plans, but we're just going to highlight them here. First of all, asking questions. Asking questions is very important because it engages children in conversations and it also helps them to build higher level thinking skills. We talk a lot about asking questions in the curriculum that begin with words like how and why and what, like you see here in this picture, because they encourage children to think beyond the yes and no's and, you know, what color is that book, it's red, or what color is the tree, it's green. Um, questions that really get children to think and also open that door for conversations back and forth with the providers. So questioning is built into the curriculum. We'll see that when we look at the lesson plans. Modeling language is very important because when children hear you speaking and using vocabulary in a meaningful way, it helps them to build vocabulary. So think about babies and toddlers that are not yet verbal and even some twos. While they may not use the same words you use now, as they hear them in context, they will use them later on. And the curriculum also has a section each day where we talk about modeling language and gives you ideas on how to do that. And then finally, teaching intentionally. It's very important to know the why behind your, what you're doing. In fact, we did a webinar this past fall on that for our customers about, you know, the why behind activities. And my philosophy is if you don't know why you're doing something, you probably shouldn't be doing it. So in the curriculum, the first bullet point of each activity will explain the why behind the activity. So, you know, why are you doing this? What do you hope to accomplish? What are your goals? What developmental areas are you going to address? Those types of questions are answered within the lesson plans because it's very important to know that. And then teachable moments. Teachable moments are those times when things just happen, they happen every day, all the time, where there's a door open for you to take what is a normal everyday you know, occurrence or maybe something that's not so normal and everyday and turn it into a teachable moment. This section explains what a teachable moment is and how you can take advantage of those. We also have a very short video in our video, video gallery on our website that contains information about teachable moments. And ongoing training and self-assessment. So, again, it's very important to understand the why behind the experiences, and this shows a little bit about how we do that in the lesson plans. We also have this webinar that is recorded, and it's in our video gallery available 24-7. So, like I said, even after tonight, if there was something you want to go back and review, if you've forgotten something, if you can't remember something, that's where you can go and you can watch the video. Um, it's always there 24-7, as are other videos that we add. Um, I just did one recently on how to log in and access the lesson plans. It's a short two-minute video, but just, you know, how do you do that? I just did another new video on how the curriculum addresses all ages. So we keep adding to that video gallery, and we will continue to do that because we feel like it's a great way to help you learn about the curriculum. And then the new monthly provider review sheet was added this year. It's just a simple little um, half a sheet of paper that you can fill out about each unit as you do it and sit back and take a, thought, take a few minutes to think about what went well, what would you have changed, um, what activities did the children like the most, why did they like them the most. It's very important for you as a provider to take that time for self-reflection because it's how you become a better teacher, it's how you become a better, um, better at, at what you do, and also then that helps the children when you sit back and do that. So that's the first section on your role. Now I'm going to go into individualization and authentic assessment. In the curriculum, we build tools in to help providers do 
individualization and authentic assessment because as you know all too well no two two-year-olds are the same no two three-year-olds are the same a four-year-old is certainly not like a baby so there needs to be individualization so what we've done is we've given some tools to help you do that as you work with children and that's what this section is about first it's about individual individualizing we view it as a five-step approach and the five-step approach starts here where you observe what the children are doing and what they you, you engage them in conversations you talk about what they're interested in um, you watch then you reflect on that okay what did I learn from that conversation or what did I learn from watching the child playing outside or inside or wherever then you plan experiences based on your observations and your reflections you do those activities and then you reflect again how did it go you know was it a success was it not a success should I do that kind of thing again and then the whole cycle starts all over again so the five-step cycle is explained in these next pages what is step one what does that mean to observe and record what is step two what does it mean to reflect plan do and then reflect again so these steps are just detailed on those two pages then on the next page we talk about what is an anecdotal note this is actually a webinar we're planning to do that would be a full webinar just on what are anecdotal notes why are they important and how you do them um, in college I know that was one of those things that was seemingly so easy and yet so hard because the trickiest part about doing anecdotal notes is keeping your own thoughts and opinions out of it and simply being what I consider to be like a camera or a video recorder where you're simply taking in data and you're not analyzing it at this point um, these pages explain what anecdotal notes are why they're important they give examples of anecdotal notes and then how once you've done the anecdotal notes you do reflections on them you know what is a reflection why is it important to reflect on what you just observed or what you just heard why is that important and here's an example of some reflections so now once you've done those two steps then you can plan and this next step explains what our observe and reflect grid and our individualization web are the observe and reflect grid lives in this user's guide and you can print as many copies as, as you need the individualization web is actually customized to each of our units so for each unit that we do you'll get a new individualization web and here's how you put it all together so again there's tips on how you can do this you might want to keep a three ring binder for each tile where you put the um, reflections and individualizations and the observe and reflect grids um, you might want to put it as part of a um, portfolio the choice is really yours but it gives you some ideas and here's what the observe and reflect reflect grid looks like this is where you would record your anecdotal notes your reflections the developmental areas you plan to address and then here's a sample one that's filled out for you to give you an idea of what it would look like once completed and then the same thing for the individualization web here's a blank one again if you were doing your own unit and you wanted a blank copy of this to use you could certainly use this um, the user's guide is available on our website for anybody at any time the sample individualization web again filled out this is for a little boy named Francisco who's interested in vehicles and we're integrating it in with our unit of the month which is I am special so what we're doing is we're giving you the tools to help you take what we've given you and individualize it for each child based on their interests you could individualize individualize it based on maybe a developmental area you want to focus on you could individualize individualize it for um, maybe a child with disabilities um, this would be a tool you could really use with anybody so again fill it out so you can kind of see what it looks like so that takes us through our individualization reflection observation section of the user's guide I'm going to go back out and go into the developmental areas and indicators which is the next section um, this is a fairly lengthy section because what we do here is we take you through the 10 developmental areas that the curriculum addresses and each one of those areas is addressed in the curriculum most activities or all activities that we do in the GWIS curriculum address multiple developmental areas at the same time so you'll never find an activity that simply says science or simply says art you're going to see that we're doing many different developmental areas in each activity that we do and we'll get into that when we get into the lesson plans but here's our graphic on the 10 developmental areas 
of the whole child that the curriculum addresses. Language development, literacy knowledge, math knowledge, science knowledge, approaches to learning, logic and reasoning, creative arts, social studies knowledge, social and emotional development, and physical development and health. Language development on each one of these, what we've done for each of the 10 developmental areas is we've explained over here on this box what language development is, and we've given you the program symbol that we use for that. And then in the pink box, we have what language development looks like, what you might see if you are a, if it's a baby, what you might see if it's an older child. And each of the 10 developmental areas goes through this way. So we have language development, literacy knowledge, math knowledge, science knowledge, logic and reasoning, approaches to learning, social studies knowledge, social and emotional development, and as part of that character education is covered in this section as well, and creative arts, and then physical development and health. And each one of those has the same setup where we explain what it is and what it looks like, which leads us into our learning indicators. So in the beginning, I talked a little bit about the state alignment charts that you can go to. These codes that you see listed here are the codes that you would then um, see in the alignment chart. So for instance, if you are doing an experience and it addresses language development in the lesson plans, you see the speech bubble. Then in the back of the guide, there's a more detailed chart that might have these codes that would say which areas of language development does the activity specifically address. So for each one of these areas, literacy and knowledge, math knowledge, you'll see these codes, LK1, LK2, LK3. And we get in the lesson plans, I'll show you where that grid is in the back. But that's more specifically how we address the different, um, the different areas of development in very specific terms. So each one of the areas, all 10 of them, have skills, specific skills that fall underneath those. So on our alignment charts, these are the skills you would see, these picture, or excuse me, these letter number codes. And then this page explains how that works. So for instance, when we have um, the day, the unit, the, the focus, you'll see a cumulative list of the picture codes. That means if you did all the activities we had planned for the day, you would address all these different areas of development. Then each experience has picture codes as well. So if you did this experience, building blocks of friendship, you would address these areas of development. You also see this symbol, which means it's an activity that involves gross motor skills. If you see this one, it means it can be taken outside if you would like it to be. And then if you see this symbol, it means it addresses character education. And that takes you through the developmental areas and learning indicators that are covered in the curriculum. And then back up again and go into the philosophy, research, and more. This section, while I won't spend a lot of time on it, has the details of the philosophies and the, and the research behind the curriculum. Um, the philosophers, Jean Piaget, Lev Vygotsky, um, Eric, Eric, Eric Erickson, and Sarah Solansky are the four um, philosophers that we base the curriculum on. And then research, um, published research that we looked at when we based the curriculum, when we created the curriculum, in addition to, and not listed here necessarily, are all of the um, state standards from all the different states that we looked at when we created the curriculum. And here's developmentally appropriate practice. We put this in there because this is just really important for you to know what is developmentally appropriate practice and how can you promote that in your program. So it's just a nice graphic to have. And that takes us through that section. And then implementing the curriculum. In this section of the user's guide, you will find all the different um, components that are included in the curriculum. This page is for getting started, what you're going to do first, sec, second, and third, um, just ideas on how you can get organized and get ready to use the curriculum. And then on these component pages, we have more detail on each different part of the curriculum. So the teaching guides are the biggest part of the curriculum. In the GWIS curriculum, each month there are two teaching guides. Each teaching guide has 10 days of activity plans. There are experiences for um, school
school-age children as well, and more information on on the Make It Sheets. There's information on, uh, so, um, not information, but a book list and different things in the back of the teaching guides. And we're going to go into a teaching guide, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. But there are two of those. Those are the biggest, that's what the lesson plans are. Here's a sample. So each day starts with the theme, the focus, and a cumulative list of the developmental areas that the curriculum addresses. So for instance, if you did all the experiences for today, you would address social and emotional, language, physical development and health, approaches to learning, logic and reasoning, science, creative arts, music, and literacy knowledge. We always have a health and safety tip every day. We have a teaching tip every day and then a transition idea. And that transition idea is really important. That is a way that you can move the children both physically and mentally from one activity to the next. Again, we mentioned this earlier, a character education. For, so in this instance, the teaching tip addresses character education as well. Over in this box is where we have tips for modeling language. You'll see some vocabulary. Now that doesn't mean we're going to put these on vocabulary cards and practice writing them or reading them or anything like that. These are words we want you to incorporate in your discussions and your conversations with children because if they hear you use these words, even words like evaporate and salt water, which might seem like really big words, if they're used in context, eventually as the children grow older, they will understand what those things mean. Then there are even more tips here for modeling language as you do the experiences with the children. We used to call this circle time, and we decided to call it exploring together because that's really what it is. It's a time for you to explore. Um, a lot of times the children are going to be making discoveries, playing games, um, engaging in hunts where they look for things. But more importantly, and this is true of all the activities in the GWIS curriculum, this first bullet right here is the why behind it. So this says, for instance, the children will, not, will help you not only evaluate what the children already know, about the ocean, but what they would like to learn. And during the course of this activity, the children will have the opportunity to build language, new vocabulary, and much more. So it might be explaining that they're going to develop fine motor skills, visual discrimination. It could be whatever. But the purpose is always in this first bullet. And then this is how you would conduct the experience or ideas on how you could conduct it. It's very flexible. You'll find that you can do it the way we have it, or you might change it up because your group is different. Sometimes we will put links to like a YouTube video and we use technology in a very purposeful way. So for instance, this is about the ocean and let's say you live in the middle of the country where going to the ocean is something that you know just you just don't have the opportunity to do. There are some excellent videos out there of ocean animals, what it's like to be in the ocean. The example I always give, too, is let's say we, we are doing maybe talking about volcanoes. Well, obviously, we're not going to go visit a volcano. Most of us don't live near a volcano, but there are some cool videos to see what happens when a volcano erupts. So it gives children the opportunity to build that knowledge in a meaningful way of using technology. And normally, these videos are very, very short, like less than two minutes. Um, but it's just to give them an idea of, of how something is in the real world when maybe you can't experience it. And they're totally optional. You can choose to do them or not do them. Over here, questions to spur thinking. These are where those higher level questions are, the what's, the how's, the why's. Um, you'll find them for each experience that we do as well. Then the day continues over here where we have two pink activities and one purple one. The pink one are for toddlers to four-year-olds. And the purple one is for your infants. We're going to look at this more in detail when we get in the lesson plans. But these are designed to be child-directed in most cases, not all cases, but most cases. Um, and also in a small group where it can be an option where you set out the materials and then the children take it in any direction that they would like. Again, you'll see more questions as for thinking. And like I said, the one in purple is for babies because babies are their own unique people and they need your own unique activities. Other components are story props. These could be pieces that you print out, cut out, and then use to make a flannel board. We've done stand-up props. We've done pocket stories. We've done all kinds of things. So they vary depending on the story about what, what kind of prop we might use. Um, new this year, we added a printable puppet that's for you as the teacher to use as a teaching tool in the second unit. The story props come in the first unit each month. The puppet comes in the second month or the second unit each month. And again, it's just a tool for you to use as a teaching tool. 
Um, in the second unit, there's a second teaching tool. This could be, in this case, it was a unit we were doing on um, math in our world, and these were obviously related to numerals. But it might be something like pattern strips. It could be a memory game. It could be, um, I'm trying to think of all the different things we have done. Could be concentration, oh, not concentration, of lotto, lotto games. We vary that depending on what the unit is and what we think would work well. The make it sheets are things that you are totally optional. They are not written into the curriculum in any way. There are two of them for each unit. Uh, this one happened to be a book that they would put together. You would print it out, they put it together, and that, the goal behind it is is not like a, it, it, not a quote unquote worksheet, but it's instead in this case, for instance, it's a tool that they can take home to read with mom and dad or a caregiver to help build language skills. Um, it might be something, again, like a game, like a, a lotto game. It could be a, a pattern strip, just like we did for the teacher tool, something like that that they can take home and then continue learning at home. There's a family letter each month, and that can be either printed out and given to parents, or, or it can be uh, actually, it's a PDF file, so you can email it to parents if you want to save paper. Um, again, the individualization web is customized to each unit. Digital family notes are kind of cool. Um, they're a JPEG file, so think of them as a photo like you would have on your, tel on your cell phone. And you can actually text this. If you save it on your cell phone as a photo, you can actually text these to your parents. Um, there are two of them with each unit. They're very simple activities that they can do at home with their children um, that reinforce what you're doing. You could also, of course, print them out. You could also just post them and if you wanted to on a bulletin board. I mean, really, the choice is theirs. That's the beauty about being a digital product like we are. You can really use it in any way that works best for you. The All About My Week reports are a time for you to step back and reflect at the end of the week um, and also let parents and caregivers know, you know, what was their child's favorite activity this week? What, where did they spend a lot of their time? What are they learning how to do? What are they getting really good at? It's just a way for you to sit back and do what I would consider almost like an authentic assessment process where you're doing observations but not necessarily writing a whole lot of things down. You're just taking in what's going on around you. Um, and speaking of assessment, we get asked a lot, is there a formal assessment that goes along with that? And when we created GWiz, we thought about that. But then we looked at what was out there in the assessment world, and we thought, well, wait a second. We are covering the skills and concepts that states are looking for in a very comprehensive way. So honestly, um, you can really use any formal assessment tool with GWiz, and because we are covering all developmental areas, your children should do quite well. I would encourage you to choose the one that you feel would work best with your children and work best for you because there are a lot of options out there. We also have some bonus material. So when you become a subscriber of GWiz, there's a section underneath once you're logged in where you can go to see um, freebies. We just posted one this past week, I believe, that are just for our subscribers. And we also do quarterly webinars for our subscribers. I think I mentioned we did the one on the why behind experiences. We've done one mealtime is learning time. We've done one on using household materials for learning um, as learning materials. And we vary what we offer. We did one on diversity. So as a customer, you get access to those webinars um, where others who are not customers do not. Developmental checklists. If you're looking for developmental checklists, you'll find these on our website. They are actually provided by the CDC. They're very, very, very helpful. They start at infancy and go up through, I believe, age four. Um, you can find them under our FCC tools at the top of our page. I'll show you where that is before we um, end the webinar. And that's just a couple. There's, there's health and safety. There's a diapering display. There's a hand washing display. There are songs and poems. and exercise cards, and numerous other things that are under that section. This page is about adapting the curriculum. So let's say you have mainly infants and toddlers, or you have children who have a short attention span, some tips for that as well. And then materials to collect. We try to use a lot of things you'd have on hand, um, clothes baskets, pots and pans, um, pillows, blanket sheets, paper plates, uh, 
nothing real elaborate. If it is elaborate or if it might require you a little bit more time to gather it, you'll find it in red in the lesson plans. And I'll show you what that looks like when we go in there in just a second. Here's some recipes for basic materials, cooked Play-Doh, bubble solution, baking clay, and washable finger paint, just to save you some money. Some tips and tricks. And then on the last two pages is our outline for the year. Um, we get asked a lot, do you cover the alphabet? Do you cover numbers? Do you color shapes? We don't see that on the outline. And the answer to that is yes, yes, and yes. Um, the way we do that is we build it into the curriculum in a meaningful kind of way. So let's say, for instance, we are doing a unit on the farm. And um, we're learning about the animals that live on the farm. We might be talking about cows and horses. So it makes logical sense at that point to talk about the letter F as you talk about farm, to talk about the letter C as you talk about cows, and the letter H as you talk about horses. In addition to that, we will oftentimes under our advanced preschooler section um, tips under each activity, and especially in the small center activities, we will um, give ideas on how advanced preschoolers can incorporate writing into any experience that we do. So you'll find that just intermixed within the lesson plans. Same thing for counting, same thing for colors during an art experience. I might mention something to the effect that now would be a great time to talk with the children about colors, see which children can identify colors as they paint, for instance. They're painting with you know, different colors of paint. They can talk to you about what colors they're choosing to use and why they chose those. That'll help you evaluate whether, you know, who knows what. Um, we try to make it very integrated into the curriculum as opposed to in isolation. Um, and then the second half of the lesson, or excuse me, of the outline would be on the next page. Okay, computer. I got a new computer, so I'm still getting used to the toggle switches. <laughs> um, second half. And you'll notice we have two units in each month. And each day, each unit covers 10 days of activities. There's plenty in there for 10 days. In fact, a lot of people tell us there's more than they can get done. So um, that is a user's guide, and it's a very important document. So if you haven't had time or you haven't, um, you know, been in that document yet, I would encourage you to do so. I will find out what exactly is going on with that one link because you should be able to click on that picture and it should be there, but for some reason it's not. Um, but for right now, you can also go into the, um, the sections like I just did. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back out of here and I'm going to go over here where it says this month's themes. I'm logged in right now as a customer. This will say sign in where it says log out if I was not a customer. And um, I can show you when I get done here where you would go to subscribe. Um, here's the tool where we're talking about FCC tools. You see all these are freebies. They're open to everybody. Um, you do not have to be a customer to get anything under here, nor under here as well. So I'm going to go under this month's theme because this is a place that you can't get to unless you're a customer. And I'm going to go under themes and components. And we are doing currently um, Digging for Dinosaurs is our first March theme. You'll see March is already up. Windy weather. February's two themes were in the rainforest and getting there. And so what you see is you see each of the different themes, and then it says click here to access the files. So I'm going to go into the getting there. Generally, we post these, um, and they're up for about 45 days. So for instance, the getting there theme would have been posted on or around January the 25th. It will stay up on our website until March the 5th or 6th, and then we will take it down. And the reason for that is we couldn't possibly keep everything up that we have. Um, it would just be so much that the website would crash. And so what we encourage everyone to do is once the new files are posted is to download them to their hard drive and or save them as a backup to the cloud, to a flash drive, to an external hard drive, something so you have a copy of it so you can go back to it if you need to. Um, some of our customers don't print things out at all. Some of our customers, except for the things for the children and the families, obviously, but like the lesson plans, they don't print them out. Others do print them out. They put them in a three-ring binder, or they 
staple them or whatever, but it's really up to the provider how they use them. So I'm going to go into the teaching guide for getting there February. Uh, my computer opens here. Some it might open automatically. Again, it's a PDF file, which means that as long as you have Adobe Reader on your machine, you should be fine. Um, and each unit starts out with a small introduction. And if there's anything that you need time to collect, in this case, cardboard boxes, shoe boxes, it puts it in a yellow box so it kind of alerts you to that ahead of time. Then there's simply a table of contents. A small reminder about the areas of development that the program addresses, as well as the Get Moving, the Sunshine, and the Character Education um, icons. This page has a 10 day has all the activities that we will be covering in the 10 days, just so you have kind of an overview of what we'll be doing, as well as the school ages at the bottom. And then we go into the lesson plan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the lesson plans and um, and I'm going to go through this teaching guide and just show you what all is in here. Go out of this, show you the different other components that are included with this unit. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to try, try is the key word here, I'm going to try, I am going to try to answer questions um, by opening my GoToWebinar um, Box. Now, I am not the organizer normally, so this would be something new for me. So um, bear with me, but I do want to be able to take some questions. I think I can unmute people. I can try and see if I can get some answer some questions. If not, I'm going to show you where to go on our webpage to send us questions via the internet, and we will get back with you as quickly as possible. I can even give you my own personal um, G Wiz email, and you can email questions to me. All right, so here on our first day of our getting their lesson plans, you'll see that we start with the, the focus of the day, and um, then we have a list of the developmental areas that are addressed, and then we have the boxes we talked about a little bit earlier. So let me go through those with you right now. So first we have our health and safety. We have our teaching tip and our transition time. Then we have our modeling language box, which is the blue box. We talk about the different words we're going to incorporate in conversations with children. We have different ways that you can model language during the experiences that you're doing. And then we go into our exploring together. So let me back that up a little bit. All right, so our exploring together is, again, like a circle time where we gather the children together. But most of the time, you'll see we do this in a very indirect kind of way. Materials listed in red, again, are things you might need to do, like put the, together the Tony the Traveler puppet and find a map of your town. Use the internet. Maybe you already have a map of your town. Again, if you do this experience, you're going to address all these different areas, language, social and emotional, science, physical development and health, creative arts, problem solving, music, social studies, and approaches to learning. This is also a get moving experience, which means we're going to do some gross motor. And what I was saying about indirectly, here's what I mean. So here's your why, okay? During the course of this experience, the children will also build fine motor control, practice expressive and receptive language, and much more. Here's the indirect way. Put the map of your town on the floor along with toy cars and trucks. What do you think is going to happen? everybody's going to come over the minute you start putting things out on the floor and want to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So a lot of times during these exploring togethers, I'll say, do this. It might be something silly. Like it might be something like, you know, go around the, the room pretending you're a cow or a bird or pretend you're flying in an airplane and, and have the children join you who, who are interested. Um, again, not like let's all get down, let's all gather and sit down and we're going to learn something. It's more of an indirect way of getting the children excited about, oh, something's going to happen. What's going to happen? What are we going to do? Because that, that excitement about learning is, is so important. And it makes it, it makes it real. It makes it so much fun for you and for the children. So then it gives you ideas on how to do the Exploring Together activity. There's an extension like this one where it says look out the window during the day and talk about the different types of transportation that they see. Over here is that box where we talked about asking those questions that get the children thinking and engage them in conversations. 
And then here are your small group activities, wheel painting fun and counting and graphing wheels. Some of them you will see, oh, up here again, questions. Some of them you will note that what we do is we actually level the experiences. We always have something for advanced preschoolers, but sometimes we break it down even further. In this case, toddlers and twos, and then threes, fours, and advanced preschoolers. And why do we do that? Well, obviously, a toddler or a two is not ready to do the same type of counting and graphing experience that maybe a four or you know, an almost five is ready to do. And so what we do is we level the experiences so you can adjust based on the children you have in your group. And it's not necessarily based on their age as much as their development. So you might have a child who is three but is developmentally more two. Or you could possibly even have a two who's more developmentally an older three. So it gives you the ability to adjust based on the type of children you have in your group. And then we have an infant experience right here because, again, Infants kind of need one-on-one, -on -one. you know, even though a lot of this is going to just be you talking, that's what you, you need to do with infants. Um, they learn from listening to you, and again, they're like little sponges. They're not going to use these words or say these words on their own for quite a while, but they're learning from you. So each day of the lesson plans goes through similarly. So here's day two. You can see where we have our exploring together, modeling language. Then we have our two small group activities or center activities, the pink ones for toddlers through four, and then our infant activity in purple. And I'm going to scroll down here. Just bear with me a second. I'm going to scroll fast. If I'm making you dizzy, I apologize. You can close your eyes, although please don't fall asleep. That's kind of what I feel like right now. Um, at the end of the day, that's the way it always is, right? I'm going to grab my bar now, and I'm going to pull it a little farther down if it'll let me, because we have 10 days of this. And then we have our school age activities. Now, we debated long and hard about whether to even put school age activities in the curriculum, but so many people said, please do. I have school age kids. I don't know what to do with them. And so we decided we would do that. They have the same picture codes that we use for the developmental areas, but their level is a different level. And also, all of these experiences, there are six of them, say extend for another day, or it might even say extend for many days because these children are older they're able to take things and do them for longer periods of time so they're able to carry over activities from one day to the next you're going to find more writing you're going to find more reading you're going to find more science you're going to find more group games they still have these questions to spur thinking but they're just doing things that are in a little more depth and at a higher level so there are six activities for school-aged children um, listed in the back like that. And then you go on to the make it sheet. Again, these are optional. You can choose to use them. You don't have to use them. They're not written into the lesson plans. This is a transportation lotto game. And then there's one here where I want to travel to, and they're going to draw a picture and write about where they would like to travel to and how they would get there. Um, again, the purpose of these is simply to be something that can go home, that can spur conversations with mom and dad or a caregiver to keep the learning going between school and home. These are for advanced preschoolers or those who are ready, getting ready to go to school. So think about those, those children who are either on the higher end of the spectrum in terms of their skill level in literacy and or math and or the kids who are getting ready to go to school. Um, more with letters, letter sounds. We do quite a bit of writing. We do poetry. We might do acrostic poems. We might do free verse poems. And then in math, like for instance, this is multiplication, which seems like way high level, right, for a preschooler. But what, when you read what we're doing, it's exposing them to what comp multiplication means, not necessarily let's mo memorize our multiplication facts. And then here's the chart I was mentioning earlier. Um, remember when we looked at the learning indicators and we looked at the little codes that went with each area of development? This is a chart that then links it all together. So let's say you do the Tony the Traveler um, exploring together activity. You're going to address all these LDs, which are language, AL, which is approaches to learning, SE, social and emotional, SK, those are um, science, PD is physical development and health, CA is creative arts, LR is logic and reasoning, SS is social studies, and 
AL is um, also, oh, I listed approaches learning too. I guess we must be doing a lot of approaches on that day. <laughs> but anyway, it takes you through all the experiences that we have and gives you the very specific skills that are addressed as you do that experience. It's carried over onto another page for school age children just because I don't have enough room to fit it on there, but those same codes are listed there. We also give you a book list, so if you're going to go to the library or you want to purchase books, you have a book list of books that would complement the theme. I highly encourage you to utilize the library as much as you can and or just your own personal library. Um, yard sales and thrift stores are excellent ways to build your library spending very little money. And um, books are awesome. I mean, I just feel like you can't have enough books. So um, this just gives you a list of books that would work well. You probably have some of your own already, and that's great. Just get out the books when you're doing the unit like this one's on um, getting there on transportation. Get out your transportation books. Uh, songs, poems, and rhymes, we write to tunes that you would know, like Farmer in the Dell, Are You Sleeping? And we put them in the back because usually there's just not enough room in the lesson plans themselves. This is how you prepare the teaching tool. This is how you prepare the puppet. There's another song. And then if we have anything that we feel that would be useful to you in terms of implementing the, this unit, we'll give it to you in the back if we can, if it's a printable. So for instance, this is a printable, obviously, of the handicap sign. And we're going to use these to make some puzzles. So if there's other things, and you could use it in other ways too. If you could find it other ways you wanted to use it, maybe with the riding toys and you want to designate areas for handicapped parking, and that opens up a whole world of conversation about why people use wheelchairs. In fact, this unit covers that and power chairs. It covers why people use those things. Um, we'll put it in the back. So I was just working on a farm unit where I was putting red, yellow, and green apple uh, a printable back there where you were going to use it for a sorting and counting game. Any kind of tool like that that we feel it can be helpful for you, we'll put it in the back of the teaching guide. Because um, our goal is to give you as much as we possibly can so you know, you're not having to scrounge around and find things. So that's one teaching guide. Um, I'm going to close it out. And then, for instance, here is where you would download the teaching tool, the puppet, the provider review sheet, the individualization web, the family letters, all about my week report, the digital family notes, and the, and the make it sheets. And this is just one unit. So keep in mind that you're going to have you know, 10, 11, 12 different um, files for each one of the units. So the best way to organize that is in folders in your computer, and then you can find things easily. All right, so I'm going to go back out of here. This is where all the units were listed, as you can see. And then I'm going to uh, show you where you would go. If you're a customer and you want those freebies that are just for you, you would go here. If, for instance, you missed our diversity webinar or our mealtime is learning time we webinar and you want to watch it, you would go there. If you needed to update anything regarding your account, like let's say you got a new credit card or you know you're um, credit card expiration date is going to expire and you need to put the new one in, that's where you would go to update your account. So all those things are listed under this month's theme once you've logged in. So um, when I log out of here, it's going to make this say sign in and um, you would not see this at all. So I mentioned earlier about the free things that you can find under here and I'm also going to go right here under support. Um, Getting started with GWiz, there's a document under there that's very helpful. Like I said, we have a video that we're getting ready to post in our video gallery that will also walk you through exactly what I just did. This is how you log in. This is where you go to find the files. This is you know, how you open the files, etc. Contact us. That's a form to fill out that is the easiest and best way for you to contact us. And if you would like a certificate of attendance for tonight's webinar, that's where you will go. You will click on Contact Us fill in the information, make sure your name is exactly the way you want it on the certificate, and then Sherry will intercept those emails and she will um, create a, a certificate and email it to you so you can print it out and put it in your files. Frequently asked questions is very helpful. There's lots of questions in there if you're having trouble with something or you have a question about something. A lot of times somebody else has already had that question, so check under frequently asked questions. If you don't find the answer there, 
just go to contact us, shoot us a question, and we do our best to get back with you as soon as we can. There are times when we're traveling or, you know, um, it's very busy or normally I'm not answering emails at 2 o'clock in the morning. I usually am answering emails early in the morning because I'm up with my kids. So it just varies. Um, and then this is simply a graphic, like if something changes, if this doesn't work for you, if you need to cancel, it walks you through how to do that. Um, what I would like to try to do now is I'm going to try to um, expand my GoToWebinar toolbar so that I can unmute anybody that might have a question. And if you raise your hand beside your name, if you have a question, I think I can unclick that and unmute you and let you ask it. But like I said, I don't normally do the organizing, so I'm not quite sure, but I'm willing to give it a try. So. Um, I'm going to expand this toolbar so you guys will be able to see it because we're sharing the screen right now. And um, I'm going to see if anybody has a question. Let's see if anybody has a question. It looked like Denise had a question. Denise, I'm going to, if, um, if you have a question, I'll be happy to try to unmute you. Denise? Hey, Beth. Hey, Beth. I just wanted to tell you how impressed I am with this. Uh, I've well, been, I, I'm glad I unmuted you then. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been doing, you know, I've been doing family child care for over 30 years, and I've been a leader in Pennsylvania for 25 of those 30 years, and I have really never seen a curriculum so tailored for family child care, and you should be very proud of your product. Well, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And like I said, this literally, Sherry's internet crashed at the last minute. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so I'm glad I, I was able to unmute you. Well, like I said, when I started the inter when I started this, we felt that there was a huge need out there for family child care providers to have a curriculum of their own. And you have such a unique situation with all these different ages and stages. And I mean, so that really means a lot to us to hear that from you, especially somebody who's been doing this for such a long time. I mean, wow. <laughs> Denise? I'm here. Okay. Thank you so much, Denise. We really appreciate all your feedback. You have a wonderful evening. You too. Let me see if anybody else has any more questions. Um, Labna Ansari, I'm going to try to unmute you. Labna? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All righty. Um, it was a very informative program. Thank you. Um, just wanted to know how much the cost would be and how can you buy the program? Okay, I'm going to get to that right as soon as I answer anybody else's questions, okay? All right, thank you, appreciate it. Uh-huh, thank you. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody else's hands, right? Oh, it looks like I have Sarah. Sarah? Sarah? Yes, thank you for taking my question. Uh, do no your problem. Webin do your webinars offer PQAS professional development hours to those who attend the webinars. What state are you in? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. We have not gotten to that point yet, but we've been asked that question. We just got approved in Pennsylvania. Um, it's your uh, uh, Keystone Stars, right? Is that right? Is that the yes, QRIS? Yeah, we yes. just got approved for that, and that's kind of the next step. <laughs> so okay. um, I've I've been in contact with them, and I hope to um, we hope to see what we need to do to make that happen. But in the meanwhile, we certainly can issue certificates of attendance saying, you know, you've come to the training, you know, you've listened in on the webinar, and at least that's step one. Okay. Yes. Thank you for taking my question. Thank you, Sarah. Have a nice evening. All right, I have Tammy. Tammy? Hi, thank you. Hi, Can you hear me? how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Um, I love what I've seen so far. My day, the daycare that I work at uses this program, but my uh -huh. provider only prints out a portion of it for us to do our lessons from. 
So I'm going to talk uh -huh. to them about printing the whole thing out because there obviously is a lot to do. Um, yes, my question <laughs> is, you did say that you don't necessarily do like the numbers and things in a certain order. Do you have a suggestion on how we might add those in? I have a lot of children that don't necessarily do a lot of talking, so I'm trying to use like the toddler area a little bit more, but I want to start incorporating ABCs and numbers. Well, what you'll find in the lesson plans is you'll find how we normally do that is just as it occurs naturally. So for instance, let's say that we're doing a unit on um, signs of spring. I'm just going to use that. And we go outside and we see how many flowers we have. And we'll find the flowers. So if you're working with toddlers, that you can, you know, let's go on a flower hunt. We're going to count flowers. And as you find them, you count them. Okay, one flower, two flowers, three flowers. And what you're doing is you're exposing them to the concept of what numerals mean and what counting means. They're not going to quite understand yet the connection between the written number three and counting to three. That comes later. So your role, especially if you're working with toddlers and young ones, is simply just to talk. Just talk. Count everything. Count how many, how many plates are on the table at snack time. Count napkins. Count chairs. Count, you know, just in terms of counting, same kind of thing with letters. They're not going to make that connection yet between that's more of a, a four-year-old skill to understand what the letter A is and what the sound of the letter A is. That comes later. But you can still, as you're doing things, talk about, oh, we're having apples for snack. Apples start with the letter A. And just kind of incorporate it in your conversations. Does that make sense? That does. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tammy. You have a nice night. All right. It looks like I have Valerie. Valerie? Yes. Do you have a question? No, actually, I have a tip, not a question. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I've been using this for a few months, and I noticed that um, uh, sometimes you, you require cardboard boxes for some of the activities. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. One of the things that I have found is that um, brown paper bags make an excellent substitution for that. Oh, um, what a great a idea. Yes. As a family child care provider, my space is really, really limited, and I can fold that down and store it, you know, uh, and it, it's out of my way as opposed to a cardboard box, and I just, I, I just thought I would share that with some of the others. I am so glad you did. That is a great idea. And a lot of times, too, especially grocery stores these days have, have you know, the paper bags versus plastic bags, and I'm sure they'd be willing to donate some, too, if you wanted extras. But I will remember that as I keep writing to, to give that tip. So I'll say cardboard box or a paper bag. That's a great idea. Or even those shopping bags you get at the mall that are paper um, with the handles. That would probably work, too. Right, and uh, I know the dollar store near us has some of the little ones that we always used to get in school for, um, you know, like popcorn bags or lunch size bags. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, That's a great those... idea. Thank you so much for sharing, Valerie. See, that's what we like to hear. I mean, we appreciate that feedback because that helps me when I'm writing and it helps us make the curriculum better. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Valerie. No problem. Have a nice evening. All right, let's see if I have everybody's question. Just if anybody else has a question that they would like to ask, please raise their hand. And, oh, my computer, come on now. I swear, sometimes it, uh, I still haven't gotten used to this trackpad. <laughs> I, think, I think that may be all the questions that I have. Again, if there are other questions, go under support, contact us, and you can type in the question and send it to us. I'm going to shrink this back now. And I'm going to go back to our home page. I want to show where the pricing is. Somebody asked that question. Um, and so I want to make sure I show where that is. Um, when we created GWIZ, we tried to keep it extremely economical. We knew that family child care providers are on very limited budgets. They don't have hundreds of dollars to spend on curriculum every month. And so the pricing is um, $18.95 for a month or $53.95 for a quarter or $192.95 for the whole year. And to subscribe, you simply click the button below the choice that you want to make, whether it be monthly, quarterly, or yearly. And you do save when you um, purchase, obviously, quarterly or yearly. That being said, we want you to be happy. So 
you can cancel up to 30 days after you start the curriculum. If you just start and you're like, whoa, this is not what is going to work for my group. It's just not working. And you email us, you say, look, I, you know, I just signed up. But I've been trying and it's not working. We will refund your entire um, amount because we want you to be happy. So basically it's a 30-day money back guarantee. Um, that is very important for us for you to be happy. And then if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see where I was talking about the video gallery. This is our video gallery. If you click, you can go in here, and there's the videos on the teachable moments. There's videos on um, how we address all ages. Like I said, we're going to add the one about how to access the materials. The other option you have is to try our free sample. Our free sample, I believe right now, is Home is Where the Heart is, which is about family. Let me see if that's the one we have up right now. Yep. Um, this was a unit we did last fall, and it works. It's a 10-day unit. You can click on any of the pictures. This will open the teacher's guide. This is a story props. If you just want to try the curriculum and see how it works for 10 days, there's the free 10-day sample. Um, anyone is, this is not a locked page in any way, shape, or form, so anybody can come here and use the, and, and try the sample. So that's the other option you have. Um, like I said, we really have tried our best, and I'm I'm so happy to hear comments like we hear from Diane because um, <laughs> that's why we do what we do every day. But we wanted this to be for family child care providers, and we hope that um, it it works for a lot of you and helps to fill that gap that maybe you just couldn't find something that did. That being said, I am going to say good night because I try to keep it right on schedule. It is eight o'clock. Um, I thank everybody for coming. Again, if you have additional questions after the webinar is over, if you have anything that you would like us to answer, you can go under support. If you attended the webinar and you want a certificate that says I attended, you can just go to the contact us form, fill it out, say I attended the webinar. I would love to have a certificate for my files. And um, to the person in Pennsylvania that asked about whether or not we were approved for training, that is something that we are looking into. And um, if uh, I think that was Sarah. Sarah, if you have any information that you can send to me to direct me um, where I need to go or, or what I, who I need to talk to, um, you can just put it under contact us and say, you know, this is for Beth, blah, blah, blah. And um, I, will, I will definitely look into that. But again, thank you all for coming. I appreciate your time. I know that by this time of the day, you're probably all very tired, <laughs> as, as we are. Um, but again, we're here. And we hope that those of you who are considering GWIS will give it a try. And those of you who are customers, please continue to share the feedback, like the one about the cardboard boxes and the paper bags. Because you know what? You're in the trenches every day. And we really do appreciate your feedback. So. Good night, everybody. I am going to end the webinar. Again, if you have questions, send them through the Contact Us field. And thank you so much for joining us. Good night.